welcome to another segment of The X Factor. I'm your host, Serenity Douglas. You guys know the routine. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the Texas, the Orange Bloods Texas football YouTube channel. You would think I just have it memorized by now, but it's hard to remember stuff like that when your head is all over the place. And I'm thinking about how Xavier Worthy had nine catches, 261 receiving yards, two touchdowns. My head is everywhere, but you had a very, very great game, Xavier. Appreciate it. You are not going to give me that right now. Besides, besides the fumble, yeah. Like I said, I had it. Yeah. Besides the fumble, but I don't know. Like how how angry can you get at somebody for fumbling when they're just trying to make things right? You were just trying to make things right. It's not like it was just you were being careless. Right. Y'all were down. Y'all were trying to come back. It was crunch time. It does suck. But I heard what Sark said to you on the sideline afterwards. Can you tell me what he said? Uh, He told me smile. He said, give me a smile. And he said, we're going to come back to you. We're going to make a play. Why do you think he was telling you that? Uh, because he knew we had to go down and score. So he wanted my head to stay in the game. Are you the type to get like down and out? Like that really pissed you off and now you just met or like, what is it? Nah, I was, I was straight. It was just like, dang, like it happened. Like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Like I felt bad, but I didn't like feel bad. Like. I was just back on the field. It happens. Like I said, it was crunch time, and you were trying to do what you had to do. Normally, I don't think that you would have even tried to – what's it called when you catch it and then you just run it back? I don't know if you would have normally even tried to do that. But at this point in the game, it was fourth quarter. Things were getting heated, and you were trying to do what was best for the team at the end of the day. And then you made it up. Right. Like a 31 yard catch all the way down. I was like, Xavier Worthy needs to get named as like the MVP or something. Something. The crazy thing is, I didn't know how much yards and stuff I had until like later on in the day. You didn't know the statistics? (laughs) I didn't know none of that. I just know, I knew I had like 100 at least. But other than that, I didn't know I had 260. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. That's what I was saying. I was like, dang, I had 260. Like, it, it even hit me. Like, I was like, that's crazy. Yeah, you're really doing really well. So, I have to know, like, are you scratching off any goals yet or checking them off? Uh, nah. My main, I, I basically erased my goals. Really? My, goal, my goal now is to win. Big Twelve Championship. And like, okay, let me write this down so I can remind you of this. Okay, you want a Big Twelve Championship. Big Twelve Championship and a Blitnikoff. And a what? The Blitnikoff, the receiver. Mm-hmm. Role. mm-hmm. Uh, okay. 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 So, at no point do you feel like you are satisfied with yourself. Obviously, it's hard because of the loss. We know that. But I want to focus on what you actually did do well. And you received 200, 260 yards is a lot. So it wasn't like, okay, that was one of my goals. Check. Nah, I don't know. It's like, nah, it's not enough. It's not enough. Okay. I mean, you have to stay with that mentality. You have a great mentality. Like Sark said in one of the press conferences in the beginning of the year, like you're one of the only ones who is like came in extremely eager to learn and just wanting to do better, never satisfied. And that's a great mentality to have, especially in the position that you're in. It's only up from there. And yeah. I saw like during the game, people who weren't who don't even go to Texas were like, Texas is wide receiver is like that. He's going first round. He's this, he's that. And I'm just like, that's Xavier Worthy. Everybody's talking about Xavier Worthy. 
And Mr. Man is just like, for me, not satisfied with nothing. <laughs> and they don't even know. Yeah, you just can't listen to that stuff and get it and get in people's heads. Like you just can't listen to that stuff. You basically just gotta block it up. Even the positive stuff. Yeah. How can the positive stuff get to your head? You get too big headed, you could just get too lax days Like, I mean, good stuff is good stuff, but not all the time. Not too much good stuff. You don't try to find like your validation with the crowd. Is basically what you're saying. That's understandable. Because if you go to them and look for the positive comments and it's like, everybody loves me, yada, yada, yada. And then you have an off game. It's like, it's going to get to you. So yeah. if you weren't worried about it back when it was positive, it won't bother you when it's negative. Right. Do you read any of the comments? Um, no. I only read like what people tell me. Like, if my mom tells me, "Oh, so and so said that," I'm like, "Oh, for real? like," but I don't go on my way just to like go like look at comments. Understandable, but it was your first Texas versus OU game experience. Period. Like, you didn't go to this game as a recruit, and this was your first time. And the first time you're on field, you had a great game. Tell me about the atmosphere. That was probably like the funnest game I ever played in. Like it was just you go, you come in and say you may go boo ah, like it's crazy. Like I never heard. <laughs> like that's probably like the best game in college football. Okay, okay. After I experienced it, because it was my first time too. That's absolutely the best rivalry in college football, in my opinion. Yeah, because yeah, like, it's it felt like I was sitting in a Super Bowl game. It's not like nobody's home game. It's like it's just mm -hmm. like F like versus like other rivalries, like they're at home. So it's mostly the other like it was like split perfectly in half. Mm -hmm. oh, it was crazy. I was saying it was like orange versus red, just sitting in the press box and seeing like where the orange meets the red. Yeah, they were right. not mixing. They were yeah. not doing that. <laughs> and then when the chant started with Texas, like the Texas fight was going on. Oh, you would try to say it yeah. was loud. No, it was. I like a lot. Like, um, the drive after, um, oh, you scored after I fumbled, and when we got back on the field, like, my helmet was like shaking, like, from how loud it was. Like, I was like, where I it was like super loud. That's crazy. What did, what were you thinking on the field? Like, what did this moment mean to you? To be honest, I really don't think nothing when I'm on the field is just, do what I gotta do. I really don't think of nothing. Like my mind be like straight, like, 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 like nothing in my mind. Do you ever feel like this is what I go through after a really big race? The only place I have like experienced this was nationals, like 2019. I don't know. I'm old. Nationals, and it was in Oregon. And I don't know if you've seen Oregon's big stadium. Their track stadium is basically as big as their football like it's great it's just for a track and when I was done I'm in the four by four you already know how you ran track the four by four is the biggest event that's the best event in track it's the that best is. event in track and field and I'm a freshman they put me fourth leg I'm shaking everything else but when I was done it was literally like it's like tunnel vision and I don't you don't really realize what you did until at least after. afterwards when I'm in the hotel or when I see videos right I'm like, it's too loud. I feel like I don't remember the race. Like, I, like, black out. Yeah, like, it was, like, certain plays in the game, like, where it was, like, I knew it was loud, but I didn't know it was loud. Like, like when I was running and stuff like that, I didn't know. I didn't hear nothing. But, like, when we watched film the other day, like, it was, like, oh, when, I was, when I scored in the first play, we watched film. He went to the back view. Like, we couldn't even watch it because, like, the screen was, like, mm -hmm. taking, like, it was crazy. Like, it was – it was rocking in there. Yeah, I like that. I'm excited to just, I'm ready to go back at this point. I want to experience the fair, the food. Didn't even get the food or the fair. Yeah, me either. <laughs> I went straight home, the same as y'all did. I went straight home. But do you see any, I want to say growth in yourself? Let's start it from our first interview. 
to now? Do you see any type of the growth that you were telling me about in your first interview to now? Any type of improvements? I know you're a perfectionist, but you have to give yourself some credit. Yeah, I'm starting to like my practice habits is changing. Like I'm starting to practice how I play. Like our coaches preach that 24 seven. So like focus on a little stuff in practice will make you focus on a little stuff in the game. So I'm starting to do that more now. Good. Okay, growth. I like that a lot. So practice. Mm. What's the vibes? Everybody's just focused on OSU. Like we're not even like talking about the game no more. Like, it hurt like on Saturday and stuff, Saturday and Sunday, maybe a little bit Sunday. But Saturday, like, but now everybody's just like back to normal. Like we on the OSU. Cause if we went out, we're gonna see them again. So we're just taking it week by week. Week by week. And Sark was saying that hopefully you guys see them December anyway. So Big Show the Championship. Tell me about some positives and some negatives. Some positives, what? what? Some positives from the game. Y'all's playmaking and then some negatives. Oh, we, we showed that we could dominate. Like, the first half, we came out. Blazing. Everything. Like, defense, block punt, first play, score, next drive, block punt, next drive, score. We just score back to back to back to back. But we just need to um, – focus on carrying that into the second half because that's where we probably got like a little like lax it is because we like started watching the scoreboard so like but sloppy. other than just a other, little sloppy yeah other than that we, we'll be all right I think so too right. I have to tell you because now I feel bad but I have to tell you orange bloods we send in our predictions before mm-hmm. the games and they just get posted on the board Mm-hmm. my prediction was right down to the points and I don't know why I just kind of felt like I don't know so you know how you and me we talked about even though our video couldn't get posted we talked about some of the mistakes mm-hmm. from the TCU game mm-hmm. and I was just like I know them and I just know they're going to bring some of those mistakes in the OU. I was hoping that y'all weren't. It's not me praying on your downfall, I promise. Already, already, I, <laughs> you said what? I already know how that goes. Mistakes carry over. They do. And I felt so awful. Like, even first of all, making a prediction, everybody always clowns me for it anyway. They're like, her scores are always, they don't correlate with any of the other staff predictions because everybody else's staff predictions were just like in the thirties or whatever. They were, they were getting on me bad. And then mine was perfect, like down to the T, but I don't know. I kind of feel like you guys are good at making the good people better. Like you, you know, Bijan, Jordan Wellington, I've been playing great, but then the things that y'all need to work on is like, are y'all working on those or what is it? I want to know. Since I'm being real with you, what is it? Yeah, we work on the like defense, of course, tackling, line, of course, blocking, receive quarterbacks, making the throws that we need to make, receivers, you're getting off of press, little, little stuff. But other than that, like it's just like really, it's like really little stuff that really got us. Like Oklahoma, they're they're a good football team. They did what they needed to do, but some of the plays were mm, like 50 50. Like, yeah. Like, some of them were like broken play scores. It was just like, it was just the extended plays that really got us. Yeah. I don't even really think they outplayed y'all, honestly. I don't think that they're a better team than y'all because they didn't play like, I know that sounds crazy, but like, they didn't play like they were a better team. It's just at the OU versus Texas game, the Red River rivalry is always down to luck honestly like we had it in 2018 or whatever year that was when Cameron Dicker kicked at the last minute and then we won like it just happens so I agree like I don't know if they were really even out playing y'all in my look that's my opinion it wasn't uh, looking like it to me I feel like we outplayed them but they got us like off of like last second plays critical plays yeah I'm happy we can agree <laughs> they didn't outplay y'all they did it but I saw that your mom went to the game how 
how much does that mean to you? Because doesn't she still stay in California? Yeah. My mom, my uncle. How does that work? My mom, my uncle, my cousin, <laughs> and my aunt. They all came down? Yeah. Did it help to see them after the game, or did it? How did to you feel? Honest. They said they were stuck, so I couldn't even see them after the game. We had to get on a bus and drive back. You said they said they were stuck? They were stuck in the stadium trying to get out. Oh, wow. So, so, you know, I, I had to call them up. Call them. Oh, dang. Yeah, because I was walking past the buses. I saw Bijan going to his family. I saw a couple of y'all going to their family. So I was wondering where you guys were, but, yeah, it was packed. It was stressing me out. <laughs> and I heard that you and DeMarvion are related. Yeah, he had he had told me like uh I forgot what he said, who what, but yeah. How? I don't I don't know. He had told me I don't I don't know how you are, but he told me like something that I, um, one of my family's married to his family. Oh, so y'all are related through marriage. Through marriage, yeah. How do you know how I, when I saw that on Twitter, I think it was DeMarvion's mom who tweeted it. And I was just like, how? California. He always talks about how he's from East Texas, East Texas. What, y'all cousins or something? You gonna see him at the family reunion? <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't seem like you're happy about being cousins with DeMarvion. <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Okay, X. I get you. I can I can read you now. It's fine. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the Orange Bloods Texas Football YouTube channel. Also, if you are interested in sponsoring Xavier Worthy or any of the other Orange Bloods athletes, let who do I even let know? Jeffrey Ketchum? Let Ketch know, Blake know, me, if you so happen to get in contact with me first. But thank you.